Hello everybody! In this uh, third uh, tutorial I'm gonna present you the physics editor of Sprite Helper 2.0. Uh, for uh, all the other tools please uh, see the other tutorials and uh, without further ado let's uh, get started. So I'm gonna go to the sprite sheet ed uh, editor and I'm gonna import some sprites that I have uh, prepared over here and um, let's go back to physics editor and now let's create some shapes. So in order to create a physical representation for a sprite you just have to create it and then go to the shapes property over here and press on the plus button and you have an option to create a concave auto trace shape which will uh, trace the shape and create a concave shape you have the option to create a convex auto trace shape which will trace the sprite and uh, create a uh, convex shape a circle, a rectangle, or you can create the shape manually. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, all of them. So I'm going to create a concave shape, and as you can see, the sprite has uh, been auto traced, and you can go to the simplify option and uh, drag the slider and simplify the the shape even further, or you can uh, go to um, a point and hold option key and click on a point to remove it, or click on a line to add another point and uh, further refine the shape and uh, uh, that's how easy it is to edit a shape so let's also create a convex shape which will uh, create a convex shape for the sprite in many cases you may not need this uh, but uh, it's good to have the option to auto trace with the concave uh, with the convex shapes because uh, in certain condition you may need the uh, convex shapes for uh, uh, an advanced algorithm or whatever you may do in your uh, in your game and um, you can also um, create circle shapes so let's create a circle and in this case you can uh, move the circle by uh, dragging its center or you can uh, resize it but holding the option key you can uh, drag the mouse down to resize it uh, or up and it will resize accordingly to what you need and uh, you can also uh, go on and I'm gonna demonstrate how to create holes so let's uh, say I want a hole over here In most cases you will not hit on this particular sprite you will not need the hole over here uh, but I want to demonstrate how easy it is to create holes so uh, let's imagine that uh, you really want this and I'm gonna uh, auto trace it and I'm gonna create a manual shape and I'm gonna place the points exactly as I need them in um, on the sprite and to close the shape you either double click on the initial point to close it or uh, double click uh, in any other location but if you double click on the on another location it will cre uh, first create a new point and then uh, close the shape so I'm just double clicking on uh, the initial point and as you can see over here I have uh, two shapes and now if I'm going to uh, to select these two shapes and go to boolean operations and choose SOAR a new shape has been created that has a hole in it you can also do stuff like uh, let's create a rectangle shape to also demonstrate the rectangle shape and for a rectangle shape when you drag either of the corners the others will uh, adjust accordingly and I can do stuff like uh, union which will combine the two selected shapes or uh, I can also do stuff like uh, intersection which will uh, create a new shape that uh, is the intersection of the two or uh, let's select this circle you can do difference which will remove the part where uh, the two shapes uh, combine based on uh, which shape is uh, the second and uh, that's how easy it is to edit the uh, shapes and uh, cr and uh, create uh, physical representation okay let's uh, auto trace this one and uh, I have this also and I have two shapes let's uh, set the physical type to dynamic 
And uh, after you set the physics type to dynamic, you can go to simulate. And this will uh, let you see exactly how uh, the shapes will uh, simulate in your game engine, which will uh, drastically reduce the time it takes for you to create your game because you uh, there is no more need for you to publish the shapes, go to your game engine, load that particular shape in, simulate it, see exactly how it behaves in your game and then go back to your physics editor, create, uh, modify the shapes as needed, then go back to your game engine and uh, simulate it again and uh, this will help you drastically reduce your uh, game creation time and of course if uh, for example the, sh uh, the sprites were to have the type no physics as you can see, uh, no simulation will perform because uh, there is no physics on uh, this sprite because it is disabled. And you can also create uh, kinematics or uh, static or uh, whatever type of object you may need. And uh, let's uh, talk about the gravity scale. Um, as you can see, these two sprites uh, have the same gravity. But if, for example, I set this... Uh, gravity to 0 0.5 uh, and then select these two sprites as you can see this will fall uh, um, with a different uh, ra a ratio or I can also do a gravity scale that is for example uh, minus 0 0.5 and it will go up it will have inverse gravity and uh, that's how easy it is to simulate and see exactly what behavior you want without uh, going back from the editor to the uh, game engine and so on. And you can also have fixed uh, rotation, in which case the sprite will not rotate and uh, this is usually good for, uh, for the player because you don't want the player to fall down and you want to f be uh, always standing up and uh, not uh, rotate if for example you need a special rotation you can uh, just rotate it by code but usually this is good for um, for the player and for other specific uh, scenarios and what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna present you another cool features in the physics editor so I'm gonna go uh, in the sprite sheets and I'm gonna import uh, some new sprites I'm gonna go to the desktop and I'm gonna import the color robots and I'm gonna go to physics editor and uh, let's create some um, rectangle shapes on um, on these sprites and actually select them all make them dynamic okay so what I want I want for example the blue robot to collide with the pink robot, the green robot to collide with the pink robot, but I want the blue and pink to not ever collide. So, usually you will do, uh, you will do this in your game engine and it will be uh, hard to do it and um, it takes time, but uh, Sprite Helper will do this simply and very fast. So, I'm gonna go to the categories over here I'm, and I'm gonna define them. You can t uh, leave the categories as they are, but you can rename them to help you set up things faster. So let's say the second category is blue, the third is green, and the fourth is pink. And let's go to the mask, and uh, I have uh, no mask other than the default, and let's create some. I want to create a mask for the blue robot. And for the blue robot, I want to collide with blue, but I don't want to collide with green. So I'm just going to drag the green outside in the ignore collision. I'm going to place it in the ignore collision. Let's create another mask called green. And I'm going to drag the blue outside. And it will collide only with green and pink. Now let's create another mask called uh, pink. And this one I want to collide with both blue and green. Okay, so now that I have my uh, mask uh, created, Let's uh, put the pink mask on the pink uh, robot and the pink category on the pink uh, robot. Select the green one and uh, set green and green. And the blue one and set blue and blue. Okay, so now if I am to uh, select both uh, all, the th all three sprites and simulate them, 
I will see how collision filtering works and how easy it is uh, to see the results inside, inside Sprite Helper. So as you can see, the, um, the blue collides with pink and the, the green collides with pink, but the green and blue do not collide. So that's how easy it is to create collision filtering and simulate uh, collision filtering to see exactly how it will behave in your game engine. Thank you for listening. This is the physics editor of Sprite Helper. Have a good day.